where we left off, we were trying to figure out what did the magnitude of our initial velocity need to be for the ball to be able to clear the green monster at Fenway Park, assuming that the batter hits it at a 45 degree angle, and he hits it one meter above home plate, and the green monster is 96 meters away, and it's 11.3 meters high. So the x component of the displacement, when it's at 96 meters, the y component of the displacement has to be 10.3 meters, not the 11.3, because it's already starting at one Meter high. It just has to get 10.3 more. It needs to go 10.3 meters higher. And we set up the problem. We set up our formula that we derived in multiple videos on displacement as a function of time and initial velocity and our acceleration. And now we're ready to go because we have all of the ingredients. So let's apply. And what's really neat is we'll, we'll essentially be able to do both the horizontal and the vertical components at, at the same time now that we've expressed all of our vectors as an engineering notation, as a combination of scaled multiples of i and j vectors. So our displacement as a function of time, our displacement as a function of time, I'll just write it all in green, is going to be equal to vi times t. Well, vi is all of this business right over here. vi is all of this business. And if you multiply a vector times a scalar, and t is a scalar, it's just a number, you just multiply each, you just scale each of its components by that much. So this is going to be equal to square root of 2 square root of let me let me make it so this part maybe i should so this part right over here this part right over here is going to be square root of 2 over 2 times the magnitude of our initial velocity times time times time times i so i'm just multiplying this times time and so both of these terms have to be multiplied by time both of these component vectors plus square root of 2 over 2 times vi times time, because we're multiplying it times this time right over here, times time times j. So that is vi times t over there. Maybe I'll make the t in yellow just so you see that this t, I've just distributed this t onto both terms on, the, on our initial velocity vector. So this thing expands into all of this business over here. I'll underline it in the same way. It expands into all of that stuff over there. And then over here, we're scaling the acceleration vector. We're essentially multiplying it by t squared over 2. So we multiply every term here by t squared over 2. Well, there really isn't an i term. We can just ignore it. So all we have is this j term, and we multiply it by t squared over 2. So all of this over here is this vector times t squared over 2. So if I multiply this times t squared over 2, I get the divided by 2 part, 9.8 divided by 2 is negative 4.9, negative 4.9, and then t squared, t squared j. So this part right over here gives us this right here. I just multiplied t squared over 2 times negative 9.8 to get the magnitude right over here, and it's going, it's in the vertical direction, although this negative tells us that we're going down in the vertical direction. Now remember, remember, we need to get we need to figure out we need to figure out what this velocity needs to be so we have to have some constraints here because we have two unknowns here we have a t and we have a v but luckily we can set up two equations cuz we said that our necessary displacement when we just tip the top of the wall has to be so i call that the necessary displacement so displacement necessary has to be 96 in the horizontal direction 96 meters 96 meters in the horizontal direction, 96 meters in the horizontal direction, and 10.3 meters in the vertical direction. So plus 10.3 meters in the vertical direction. So how can we set up two equations here? So what's the what's the horizontal component of all of this business up here? Well, the horizontal component of all of this is the, what's multiplied by the i vector. I can even write make it orange right over there. So that needs to be equal to this right over here. And what's the vertical component? Well, the vertical component is all the stuff that's multiplied by the j vector. And actually, we can group them, or we could, we could factor out a j vector, I guess is one way to think about it. And all of that needs to be equal to this. It needs to be this over here. And so that essentially gives us two equations and two unknowns and allows us to solve for the necessary v to clear the green monster. So let's try that out. So this first equation, we get right over here, square root of 2 over 2 times our initial velocity times time. 
needs to be equal to 96, right? The magnitude here has to be equal to the same magnitude here. And then if we talk about all of the j components, we could factor out a j here. So all of this stuff, all of this stuff is multiplied by j. All of this stuff is multiplied by j. I essentially just factored it out. So this is the magnitude in the vertical direction, and that needs to be equal to 10.3. So our second, our second equation with two unknowns is square root of 2 over 2 times the magnitude of our initial velocity times time times time minus 4.9 minus 4.9 t squared needs to be equal to 10.3. And our goal here is to solve for v sub i, is to solve for the magnitude of our initial velocity. Well, what we could do here is solve for t here in terms of v sub i, and then substitute back in here, and then solve for that v, that, that necessary initial velocity, or the magnitude of it. So to solve for t here, pretty straightforward. You just divide both sides by square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2 v sub i, square root of 2 over 2 v sub i. These guys over here cancel out, and you get t is 96 over all of this business, which is the same thing as saying t is equal to t is equal to dividing by 2 square root of 2 over 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 2 over the square root of 2, which is really just the square root of 2. So let me just do that. This right over here, I'll write it over here. So 96 over the square root of 2 over 2 is equal to 96 times 2 over the square root of 2. And 2 divided by the square root of 2 is just the square root of 2. So this simplifies to 96 square roots of 2, 96 square roots of 2 over our initial velocity. And now we can take this and we could substitute it back into this other constraint where every time we see a t, and then we'll have one equation with one unknown. We will get, we will get square root of 2. We'll do that in blue. We will get square root of 2 over 2 times the magnitude of our initial velocity times time. We just figured out the time is all of this business over here. So it's times 96 times the square root of 2 over v sub i minus, minus 4.9 minus 4.9 times t squared. Minus 4.9 times t squared. Well, what's t squared? t squared is the same thing as this thing squared. So it's minus 4.9 times 96 squared times square root of 2 squared. So that's just 2. All of that over v sub i, all of that over v sub i squared. Did I do that right? Yeah, if I square this, I get 96 squared times square root of 2 squared, which is just 2 over v sub i squared. And then that it needs to be equal to that needs to be equal to 10.3. And now we just need to solve for v sub i. It might look daunting, but it's not going to be as bad if we just keep if we keep if we keep our heads down and we focus on the problem at hand, I guess. So the first thing to simplify, we have a v sub i in the numerator, one in the denominator. These two cancel out. And then we have a square root of 2 times a square root of 2. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2. And we have a 2 in the numerator and 2 in the denominator. That cancels out. So this whole first term can simplify to 96, which is nice. So that is 96. And then we have minus all of this business over v sub i squared. So let's figure out what all of that business is. Let's just multiply it out, get the calculator. So I have 4.9 times 96 squared times 96 squared times 2 times 2 gives me 90,316, which is about right, because this will be about 10,000. And so, yep, 90,316. So minus, minus 90,316 divided by v sub i squared is equal to, is equal to 10.3. And now we know that, just to simplify, let's just multiply everything times v sub i squared. We get 96 times the initial magnitude of our initial velocity squared minus 90,316. Right, that's the whole point behind multiplying everything times this. So this, so it's not in the denominator anymore, is equal to 10.3 times v sub i squared. And now we can let's. Let's do a couple of interesting things here. Let's add, well, let me just subtract 10.3 v, let me just subtract 10.3 v sub i squared from both sides. 0.3 v sub i squared. And let's add, 
90,316 to both sides, plus 90,316 to both sides. And what do we get? On the left-hand side, these guys cancel out. If I take 96 minus 10.3, 96 minus 10 is 86. So what I want to subtract another 0.3. So it's 85.7 v sub i squared is equal to, on this side, these guys cancel out is equal to is equal to 90,316. Now I can just divide both sides by 85.7, 85.7, and I get v sub i squared. This is where the home stretch is equal to this. Let me get the calculator out again. So it's equal to this quantity divided by 85.7, which is equal to 1,053, well, let's just say 1,053 or 1,054 if we round. So 1,054. This is going to be in meters squared per second squared. We didn't write the units. But then to solve for v sub i, we just take the square root of both sides. So v sub i is going to be the principal root of this. So let's just take the square root of that. The square root of that gives us 32.5. 32.5. So our 32.5. And we're done. This is going to be in meters per second, since that's the, those are the units that we've been handling. We've been handling with kilometer, I mean, sorry, with meters and seconds and all of the rest. And so that's the velocity that the ball, the magnitude of that initial velocity. When you get stuck in the math, you sometimes forget what we were even doing. But if you hit something at 32 meters per second at a 45 degree angle, one, me, one meter above home plate, one meter above home plate, in Fenway Park, in this direction, you will just cross, or you will just hit the top of the green monster. So if you go any bit faster than that, so if you were to go, if you were to go 33 meters per second, and we assume that the air resistance is negligible and it's not slowing you down, you will be able to cross the green monster at an optimal angle of 45 degrees. If your angle isn't optimal, you'll have to put some more uh, velocity onto that thing, or uh, put a little bit more magnitude on that thing, I should say. And just for fun, if you want to, you might want to convert this into kilometers per hour or miles per hour, and that may give you tangible, a more tangible sense for how hard you have to hit that ball.